Archaeology is the study of who we are and who we may become. As noble as that sounds, sometimes the work of digging up the past comes with chilling consequences. Recent discoveries in the field span from sacrificial horrors beyond comprehension to abandoned artifacts that are literally frozen in time. So, here, five discoveries that remind us that the human story isn't always pretty. In 2022, archaeologists working in the Chincha Valley along the southern coast of Peru discovered a macabre collection of 192 partially reconstructed human spines on sticks. The artifacts were loose vertebrae knuckles, strung through reeds like beads on a necklace. Each post contained the spinal column of a single individual, but not stacked anatomically correctly. More of a sort of mismatched bone kebab, if you will. The spines were from members of the Chinchoro culture, which existed from 1000 to 1400 CE. The Chinchoro thrived for centuries as their own kingdom, before eventually being integrated into the Incan civilization. In their funerary tradition, bodies were placed within towering tombs called chulpas, a type of ancient above-ground mausoleum. Bodies from this period were traditionally laid in the fetal position and intact, but these recently discovered remains were intentionally disturbed, then reassembled, as if some sort of attempt was being made to put the skeletons back together in a hurry. Turns out, theirs was not a lucky time to be a native. The Chincharo suffered a catastrophic depopulation thanks to European colonization. The explorers from the east introduced foreign viruses, epidemics, all of which coincided with a horrific famine. The once thriving society of 30,000 households in 1533 dwindled to under a thousand by 1583, nearly obliterating their people in just 50 years. The spinal reeds were radiocarbon dated to this period of great loss, suggesting they were victims of bad timing and possibly grave robbing. The most logical theory for the spine posts is based on tragedy. Burial of loved ones was highly ritualized by this culture, with valuable belongings being laid beside those that passed, including gold and silver. When colonial explorers realized every chincha graveyard was a treasure hunt, they dug up the graves and stole whatever valuables they could find, not caring how much they disturbed the bodies in the process. Archaeologists' best theory is that the reed-strung spinal columns are the attempts of remaining survivors to put their loved ones' skeletons back together so that they could rest in peace. Let me interrupt today's video to tell you about today's fantastic sponsor, Foreo. They've got some incredible beauty tech devices. You might be thinking, beauty pro like Simon, really? And I thought the same thing as well. I mean, I'm not exactly the, the market for beauty products. You're probably not as well. So I asked them, well, send me a device. Give me a month and I'll try it and see if it uh, is, is really good. So this is what they sent me. It's called the Bear by Foreo Sweden. And it's an energizing facial workout that stimulates your skin with microcurrent technology, while gentle T-sonic pulsations give you a relaxing massage. Plus, it's the only Atom microcurrent device with an anti-shock system, so it doesn't zap you, which is nice. This is super easy to use. You apply the serum to your face, and then for two minutes, you uh, just there's, there's this app, and it gives you instructions on what to do. I did this for a month to see if it was legit, and I genuinely had had better skin, better definition. I uh, honestly was pretty skeptical, and then it worked, which is why you're seeing this ad. Foreo is offering an exclusive discount just for you. Get 21% off the bear by using the link in the description below. It's uh, it's really a fantastic device. Also, this can make a fantastic gift for a significant other. Um, I've done that, so uh, yeah, brilliant. Thanks again to Foreo for sponsoring this video. Check out their other amazing beauty devices as well when you click the link below. And now back to today's video. This past January 2023, in preparation for the construction of a new housing development, workers in Winteringham in England came across the ruins of an ancient settlement. The site had artifacts spanning nearly a thousand years, from the late Iron Age through to the Roman occupation, from 500 BCE to 400 CE. The excavation consisted of 40 houses, roads, farms, kilns, and a grain mill. They also discovered a disturbing trend. 17 decapitated bodies, 11 of which had had their heads placed at their feet for burial. Some of the remains had clay pots resting where their heads should be, all had their skulls placed between their knees or feet. These particular individuals were dated back to the late 3rd century, which was during the time of Roman rule. These deviant burials were common at the time, and researchers are trying to figure out why. 
There are several theories. One is that these were criminals buried in their own mass grave, separate from the rest of the community. This was a time of great upheaval in Britain, where the power was transitioning from local governments to Roman authority. Some experts believe that these bodies were the victims of capital punishment, as decapitation was one of the four approved methods sanctioned by Rome for executions. The placement of their heads at their feet might possibly be an act of public shaming for their crimes. Others think that the heads being placed near the feet has got nothing to do with criminal activity and is simply the common method of burial at the time. These are not the only headless bodies found in British Roman settlements. Out of 400 remains from the same period found in Buckinghamshire, dozens had the telltale burial of heads placed near their owners' feet. The same was true for 17 bodies found in Somersham. While experts continue to research this, they note that perhaps removing the head after a natural death was a practice based on superstition or a local custom. Even if they feared the deceased may rise from the dead, both the Anglo and Roman traditions felt that the body should be buried whole. This may explain why the skulls are included with the remains, but how and why they were removed in the first place still just remains a mystery. In 2022, two lead sarcophagi were discovered beneath the floor of the Notre Dame Cathedral. They were found during renovation work, along with a cache of various statues, sculptures, and fragments from the 13th century. One casket contained a historic member of the church, the other, a mystery corpse without teeth and an oddly deformed skull. Back in 2019, there was a fire that damaged vast sections of the cathedral, and during repairs to the floor, workers discovered the statues just 20 centimeters or 8 inches under the damaged floor. They kept working their way down, finding more treasures, until a meter under the floor of Notre Dame, they discovered the lead coffins. One of the caskets was well made and marked with a brass plaque. The other was a much older one, comparatively poorly crafted and from centuries earlier. The plaque sarcophagus contained the remains of Antoine de la Porte, a canon of the church, which was a title given to both priests and secular members of the congregation for their contributions to the cathedral. Porte made a substantial donation in the 16th century to renovate the choir section of the church. He also commissioned several paintings that still hang today in the Louvre. His plaque reads, This is the body of Messire Anton of the Canon Bordet of the church. And the word that's erased, and then death December 24, 1710, in his 83rd year, requisant in peace. The second night casket left archaeologists with more questions than answers. What is known about the man is that he passed in his 30s and was missing his teeth, which possibly led to his early demise. He also had an elongated skull. Experts theorize that the deformity was with him his entire life, probably from the practice of aristocrats' infants wearing tight decorative headbands which impeded normal skull growth. What they do know about the nameless man is his pelvic bone shows signs of a man who spent a lot of time in the saddle, and he was also named Le Cavalier and is assumed to have been a knight as he was laid to rest in such a place of honor in the cathedral. Oddly, there were the remnants of a flower crown around his head, not a common burial practice in the Middle Ages. The teams involved wanted to be clear that while the bodies are part of Paris's history, they were not to be treated as archaeological objects and would be handled with respect while research continues. Once the study of the remains is complete, the Paris Culture Ministry will decide what will happen with the bodies. <laughs> In 2011, excavations began near the ruins of a 3,500-year-old temple near the city of Trio in Peru. Within a few weeks of the starting of the digging, the graves of 42 children and 76 llamas were unearthed. And that was just the beginning. The teams involved at the site, which they nicknamed Las Llamas, were both excited and horrified as work continued and mutilated young bodies were uncovered by the dozens. Up until that point, the largest child sacrifice ever documented was 42 bodies in the Aztec capital of Tenochtitlan in Mexico. Las Llamas' findings were on track to absolutely obliterate those numbers. A few years into the dig, the number of sacrificial victims uncovered escalated to over 140 children between the ages of 5 and 14, with the majority being 8 to 12 years old. So this made it the largest child sacrifice ever discovered to date. The archaeologists on site are certain that their end was sacrificial. The uncovered bodies share the telltale signs of systemic ritualized murder, including rib cages split open to make it easier to remove their hearts and red cinema pavement across their skulls. Alongside the bodies of the children were 200 slaughtered llamas, also found with their sternum split open. 
Both the children and livestock had remnants of woven ropes and fabrics, which aided in dating the ritual between 1400 and 1450 CE. The buried children were all positioned facing west towards the sea and the sunset over the Pacific Ocean. The 200 lamas sacrificed beside them were also young, under the age of 18 months, and all positioned facing the east toward the Andes, their mountain home. These children were killed by members of the Chimu culture. It was possibly done as a last-ditch effort to appease the gods after a recent natural disaster, as there was strong evidence of heavy rainfall and flooding in the periods that may have driven them to do this sacrifice. Another possible reason for the sacrifice was favor in war, as during this time the Chimu were being brought down by the Inca Empire. The Chimu spanned most of the Pacific coast and thrived there until they collapsed a few decades after this bloodbath, around 1475 CE. The remains of three adults were also found, a man and two women. They had all died from blunt force trauma to their heads and had not been buried with any personal effects. The best guess of researchers is that they played a part in the ritual killings, possibly the team that committed all of the murders, and uh, they were killed shortly after the deed was done. In March of 2022, history was made of the discovery of Sir Ernest Shackleton's famous ship, the Endurance, which originally sank over a hundred years ago off the coast of Antarctica. She was found resting 3,000 meters, that's nearly 10,000 feet, under the surface, sitting upright and proud on the seafloor, looking much the same as the day she sank. When Shackleton attempted the historic cross-Antarctic expedition in 1915, he and his crew of 27 men sailed on the Endurance, a three-mastered wooden vessel built in Norway. The plan was for the ship to drop off the crew and their supplies on one side of the continent, while another ship, 600 miles across the frozen landmass, was waiting to send the brave adventurers home. But things didn't go as planned, and the Endurance became trapped in the sea ice before even reaching Antarctica. Despite months of the crew picking away at the ice in an attempt to free her, the Endurance eventually took on water and sank. Fortunately, the ship's captain kept a disciplined log and charted the coordinates of the boat's location upon sinking. That century-old logbook is what helped the team of scientists locate the wreck. The crew that found the Endurance was from the Falklands Maritime Heritage Trust, and the Discovery Expedition was privately funded by an anonymous donor to locate, film, and scan the wreck. It took the crew two weeks of searching, thanks to the use of deep-sea probes loaded with surveillance gear, sonar, and high-definition cameras, but what they discovered was a time capsule. The ship remained so well-preserved because water pressure at that depth is too intense to allow the sea to freeze and too cold for the types of bacteria that eat away at wood. So she rests very much like the day she sank. Her only crew now, coral and sea anemones, are waving in the current. Menson Bound, director of exploration on the expedition, said, quote, We are overwhelmed by our good fortune in having located and captured images of endurance. This is by far the finest wooden shipwreck I've ever seen. It's upright, well proud of the seabed, intact, and in a brilliant state of preservation. You can even see endurance arced across the stern, directly below the taffrail. This is a milestone in polar history. However, it is not all about the past. We are bringing the story of Shackleton and endurance to new audiences and to the next generation who will be entrusted with the essential safeguarding of our polar regions and our planet. The ship will remain where she rests, which is protected as a historic site and will remain undisturbed for the time being.